Hey friends, thank you so much for dropping by. My name is Patrick God and welcome to a new .NET 7 Blazor video. You read the title, today it's about the new navigation lock component. And you might ask, what the heck is this, Patrick? Well, maybe there is a time when you want your user to fill in the form, for instance, and then the user should definitely click the submit button before he or she leaves the page because if the user leaves the page then all the data is lost unless you store it in the local storage for instance. This is something new here in .NET 7 with the navigation lock. You can prevent the user from leaving the site if, well, you say a flag is dirty or a text box has some information in there, something like that. So you want to make sure that the user definitely submits the data the user entered and uh, only then he or she can leave the page. I think you, you get the idea, right? So this is everything in essence. And if you learn something and like this video, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. It does make a difference. Thank you so much for that, guys. I love every single one of you 27 thousand subscribers this is just crazy thank you very much and additionally if you want to get more stuff in your inbox more videos like this one here earlier and also new lots of new upcoming courses because dotnet 7 is coming not only the dotnet web dev bootcamp is coming but also all the updates to my existing courses and if you're a subscriber to my newsletter you will definitely get early access to all these courses so maybe this is interesting for you dotnet 7 is coming guys it's a around the corner. And that's everything for the intro and now enjoy the tutorial. All right, so Visual Studio 2022 it is. It's the preview edition because by the time of recording, .NET 7 is not out yet, but maybe it's only a, a month, not even a month, and then .NET 7 should be out. Either way, we create a Blazor WebAssembly application. Let's call this Blazor Navigation Lock to show you this great little new feature. .NET 7, here you see it, it's the preview edition. In your case, it might already be the released version of .NET 7, configure HTTPS, ASP.NET Core hosted, whatever, why not? We don't really need it, but this is now the default setting for a Blazor WebAssembly application. We can close everything and here we see our beautiful Solution Explorer, I hope. Yeah, there it is. All right, okay. So now we can already actually start the application. Well, to show you how it looks, pretty sure you already know that, but then I wanna, I wanna show you something. So we've got our homepage, the counter page and the fetch data page. And now here in the counter page, I wanna use this one here for this example. You can also use a form for instance, for this example. Again, I got this from the community stand up. The link is anywhere here in the screen, maybe as an info card. Yeah, I think so. And what you can do now, for instance, you can click on this counter, right? And when we leave the page, we will also leave uh, or not leave, but we will uh, lose the number eight here, right? So we can go to home and then we go back and there it is, it's zero again. Now, maybe you wanna build something where the user has to save the current count or submit it or anything like that. And then the uh, ASP.NET Core hosted app makes sense again, because then we wanna make a, a web service call, for instance, so we hit click me several times. And then there's also a submit button and maybe you want to, you want the user to first submit this result here, or it's a form, anything like that, before he or she leaves the page again. But when the user leaves the page and then goes back again, all the data is lost. And with this new navigation log, we can fix this. Isn't this nice? And the fix looks like that that there's simply, well, you can actually, this is really customizable. You can you can do anything you want here, but the easiest way to, to do that, to lock the page somehow is to just open a little dialog, a browser dialog that is asking the user if he or she really wants to leave the page. And this is what we wanna, what we're going to do next. So back to Visual Studio. And here we are, here's the counter page. And now let's say we've got our button and if the count is greater than zero, we wanna lock the navigation, right? So at if the current count is greater than zero, we use this beautiful new component called navigation lock. There it is already. 
And here now, there are these two parameters, confirm external navigation, we'll talk about that later, but maybe you can already guess what this means. But for now, on before internal navigation, it says it here gets or sets a callback to be invoked when an internal navigation event occurs. So this means we just want to call a function here. And this function is then called when the user leaves the page and the current count is greater than zero. So uh, let's call this, I don't know, really leave, for instance. So are you sure, my dear user, that you want to leave this page? And now down here, we create this little method. It's an asynchronous one because, well, for the browser dialog, we need the JavaScript runtime, so we have to inject it in a minute. So, and then we call an asynchronous function for that, and this is why this is an async method. Ricky, Ricky, not, not, not bad. Really leave, and here now we also need a parameter, and this is a location changing context, right? So location changing context contains context for change to the browser's current location. There's also something new like the history state, but this is something maybe for another video. For now, we just want to have this context here. And first, let's build the dialog. And for this, we inject the JavaScript runtime real quick. So at inject ijs runtime it is, we call this js. And with that, then we can call any JavaScript method we want. By the way, if you want to use a custom one, you can totally do so by just adding it here, for instance, in the index HTML, right? Here's a script block, add another script block, and then you can also call this method then if you don't know the JS runtime yet, but now you do. And uh, apart from that, of course, you can also call any other JavaScript method. So let's say var confirmed and then await JS invoke Come on, invoke async. And here it says it invokes the specified JavaScript function asynchronously. We also add the type. So this will now then be a Boolean value because we want to call window confirm. So the user really has to confirm this, has to click OK or cancel. And then here we say, are you sure you want to leave, dude? almost like that. Maybe let's close the solution explorer again. And with that now, see that we get this result here in the confirmed variable, this will then be a boolean variable. So if the user confirms that this is true, if not, this will be false. And now here we can say, if the user does not confirm, so the user decides, Oh, no, I want to stay on this page, then we just say context and then prevent navigation prevents this navigation from continuing. Isn't that great? And by the way, see this here history entry state gets the state associated with the target history entry. This is also something new. Uh, but again, maybe this is something for another video. So now for us, uh, would be prevents prevent prevent navigation, this function, we call this one. And here, of course, we fix this typo. And this is already everything. All right, so let's format this, save it. And yes, we want to rebuild. And now let's go back to our page here. Okay, now the count is zero, we go to home, everything's fine. But now let's say we click this some sometime, sometime, a couple of times. And then we go to home. Voila, are you sure you want to leave dude, and then we can say cancel, or of course, we go to home again, click okay, and then we navigate back to home. Isn't that nice? Now, one more thing to add here, what about reloading the page or moving to an external page, meaning entering something different here in the address bar? Well, in that case, what you can do is you can just add this little parameter confirm external navigation gets or sets whether a browser dialog should prompt the user to either confirm or cancel external navigations, we don't have to set a value here. By default, this is then set to true. Save that one more time, or maybe just to, to really prove that. So now it's rebuilding. So we click that we go to home, it's asking us great. But what if we reload, we can just reload. But now, when we add this parameter, confirm external navigation, then we can well reload the page again. 
and again, and let me just click here, reload, reload site, changes you made may not be saved. Well, downside here is we do not see our custom message, but still we prevent the user from continuing with the navigation and then we can say cancel or we can actually say reload. And of course this works with one as well. Let's just reload the page and we're done. Isn't that great? And this is everything you need to know about the new navigation log. Pretty cool stuff and pretty simple with this new component. I will, although this is pretty simple, I will still push this to GitHub, of course, as always, and the link will be in the video description. Tell me what you think. Thank you very much and see you next time. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. This is it. This is the new navigation log. I really love this because it's really easy. Some people think you should add this in the navigation manager, but with that, well, that's just a new component. You can just throw in there and it works. I love this. So nothing special to do here and it works. Great stuff. If you also like this and you like this video and learned something even, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much, everybody. It does make a difference, means the world to me. And if you want to get these videos here earlier in your inbox and even more .NET and Blazor stuff like access to my courses, then maybe you want to subscribe to my newsletter. Thank you very much for that as well. And apart from that, just stay here on my channel, hang out a little, just check out the videos here on the side and then you get lots and lots of new .NET and Blazor knowledge. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.